Thank you. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Philip Roundtree. Meanwhile, everybody else is smiling, 
introducing themselves. And I had to take a step back, and I had to say, first, this could be a business partner, right? This could be somebody I can connect with and make money, which is always a beautiful thing. But then second, this is my brother. This is my family. This is somebody that looks like me. Why am I walking around with a frowned up face? Afraid to introduce myself, to walk up and say what's up to another brother. You have no idea what your smile might do to another brother. I know it might not be cool to we just walk around and show you what's up, man. But it is, there's something to be said for that. When I was standing outside, this lady walked up to me, she was coming out the hotel, and she was like, this is what depression looks like. I was like, yeah, smile, yeah, it is. I'm somebody that lived with depression and anxiety. I was suicidal for 15 years, every day, five or six times a day, all right? So she's sitting and she's like, she, she frowned her face up, and she wanted to understand why I wear it, right? I'm not ashamed of who I am. I'm not ashamed of what I look like. This is a part of my journey. This is a part of my story. And she said, okay, I don't know if she got it or not, but that's not my job to understand if she gets it or not. I get it. Yeah. And what she said to me was, she said, all right, take care of yourself. It's a war out there. It's a war out there. And I'm like, it's a war in here. It's a war in here. I had to think about it. It's a war out here. I'm not walking around here like it's a war. I'm walking around like, I belong here. I'm not worried about surviving, right? And I know it's a very real thing, having to worry about surviving, the fear that comes with that. But I can't live life that way. I can't live life not wanting to interact with, my, with other brothers with whom I do not know. I can't do that. But it took time for me to put myself in a space to where I was able to recognize that you are my brother. How many times have I seen you at the gym? My good brother from DHS, we always show love. It's funny, but this is how it is. Maybe just because there's so few black men there. But the fact of the matter is, now I'm at a place because I have to show love. Because I do recognize it can mean the difference between life and death. But also, I never know what somebody's going through. He never knew what I was going through. Because only a few years that I get out here and really start talking about what mental health means to me. But anytime I saw him, it was love. And what that meant for me, that made me feel just a little bit better as I battle these thoughts in my head, as I battle with what I think is happening out there. Social media not gonna tell you this. Social media not gonna have this conversation with you. This very well might be the last time you hear some knowledge, some information, I hope it's not the case. You're much luckier than I was. When I was 13, seeing my mom have a nervous breakdown, when I was 17, my brother dying from taking Molly's and Percocets and Cody, God bless the dead, at 24 years of age. I didn't have this outlet, I didn't have the knowledge, the awareness that I needed, that I have now. And so that's the reason why I'm here, right? I was sitting, or in my way here, when I was just sitting in the car, I saw that, that they sentenced I, I call him Bill, right? Never met him a day in my life. His name is Bill Bethel. He went to Boys Latin High School, right? He was shot and killed last year by somebody that looks like him, by somebody that looks like one of you. And so Zamir White was sentenced to 25 to 50 years, 19 years of age, two lives gone. Again, if we, had, if we didn't have this idea of competition, that you my brother, not my nigga, but you my brother, that changes how the interactions happen. I can't hurt you if I look at you as being my brother and not another nigga. But that's just me. That's how I get there. I was there. Boys Latin called me out, said, yo, can you come out on Saturday? Because I was a therapist at the time. Can you just come talk to the young brothers? Because of after Bill's death and what happened. And I went there and I sat there. And I just sat. And I'm looking at young brothers your age crying. Saying, oh man, it's messed up. That shouldn't have happened to him. And so I had to think about it. What, what is it about that situation where brotherhood was lacking? What is it? What was missing? 
We talk about knowledge of self and being secure in self, right? So God bless the dead. I've never talked ill about the dead, right? But Bill, he had moved. He had moved to Roxborough with his family, but he wanted to hang out with his homies, his old homies. I love my friends. I got a homie who's been out now for three years, having to go into jail for, for eight years for a million dollar cocaine ring. That's my brother from another. I would never disown him. But I had to separate myself when I knew he was doing what he was doing. Another brother who smokes weed every day, love him. We grew up together. I had to separate myself from him because I didn't want whatever energy was coming his direction to come mine. So we have to be mindful with who we're interacting. Yes, you my homie, I love you to death, but I ain't gotta go down South Street with you, especially if I know how you roll, right? No different than Zamir who had to pull out the gun, shooting the wrong person at that. Where was his homies to say, yo, yo, don't, don't burn that. Why you even got that? Because he didn't have anybody to stand up for him, stand up to him, to hold him accountable. You have to have knowledge of yourself to hold your brother accountable. To say, yo, that's not cool. Don't do that. You got to be comfortable in that. And if that's your friend, if that's your family, then it's your right, it's your duty to say something. Again, when we talk about relationships and brotherhood, we talk about quality over quantity. I can tell you, I was cool with people in high school, mad friends in college, then social media came. I kind of got like, you know, I got like 5,000 IG friends, about 2,000, I'm, I'm old here, so Facebook, I still got Facebook, I use that, right? I got 2,000 Facebook friends, a couple hundred Twitter friends, friends, right? Because when it comes down to it, when something goes down, how many people can I call? Maybe about three or four? We talk about faux connections. These aren't real connections. This is not building a brotherhood. But by something that you post, something that you tweet, it can destroy your brotherhood. So you've got to be mindful of that. We talk about having healthy interactions. Again, being around your homies, holding them accountable. I had one homie, he, he got better now. In his 20s, he always wanted to fight. I can't fight, I've never been in my life. Fight in my life, I'm too pretty to fight. All right, that's what I always say. I'm too pretty to fight, I can't do that. But again, I saw how he was getting down everywhere we went. So I had to be mindful. Yo, that's not a healthy interaction for me. You my man, but I can't go out with you. All right? Again, we gotta build relationships on, stuff, on substance. Who can get the most girls? That's not substance, right? Who can do X, Y, and Z? That's not substance. Substance is being able to cry with your brother. Him being able to hold you accountable, being able to laugh with him too. That's what brotherhood is. Again, we're talking about building trust. Trust is necessary in relationships. I'm sure you brothers know each other. But trust is real. Trust is something that worked on every day. I need to trust you and to be able to have a, a healthy conversation with you, right? I have to love you to be able to have a healthy conversation with you, and that stems from trust. And like I said earlier, man, listen, if you have to separate yourself. Now, this might not mean nothing at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, but I guarantee it, at 29, 30, 31, 32, you're going to be like, man, I love y'all, but I just can't be around y'all. Maybe we could be in a group chat together, but I can't be around you. But that comes with time, that comes with experience. And you don't want to be the person that nobody wants to interact with anymore. So that's why you have to grow. You have to do your own work. And what's your own work? What your own work is talking to somebody. Not just your homie, but literally talking to somebody. A therapist your counselor, your teacher, somebody you trust. That's how you work with yourself. That's how you build real confidence. Confidence that's not shaken. The type of confidence that when you walk in a room, you go around and shake everybody's hand. Ask me a year ago, I probably wasn't going to do that because I wasn't secure in myself. No matter how cool I think I look, 
I just started wearing skinny legs. I, I see why y'all like them. They can scratch. I can tell my sneaker and all that. But I yeah, lift it up. It's, it's a good thing. But I digress. I digress. Say again. Well, you said I got slim fit on. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so it's slim, it's slim and it's skinny. Or is it skinny slim? <laughs> Just let, just let, sometimes, you know what, when the old head's talking, you just gotta let them go, like, old head. Yeah. Or you know what, even better, come up to me like, listen, old head, I heard what you said up there, but let me school you, all right? Because, no, real right, real right, old heads need to be schooled too. I don't know everything. I have to learn from you, right? I have to learn from you, just like you learn from us. Now, social media, social media is real, right? It's hard. And I was sitting here, I was sitting here and I was just looking around. And I'm like, this is a perfect opportunity to build brotherhood. But I saw so many people on their phones. Whether they were 80, oh, and nobody had 80 here, but I'm gonna say 80 anyway, right? From eight to 80, it was all ages when I looked around. And I'm like, listen, this is a perfect opportunity to grow outside of here. But here, my five minutes is cool up here. I'm probably like seven smiles. That's what you're supposed to say, no, where you at seven? <laughs> but that's where the real conversation happens. That's where the real brotherhood happens. And I don't fault you if you don't know, because that's when people like me are supposed to be able to come around to the table and say, young fella, go be somebody you don't know. And just say what's up, introduce yourself. That's how we grow. That's how it becomes a brotherhood. You can't get that on social media. Right? You can't get that one-on-one -on -one interaction that you need to get to where you want to be in life. Listen, knowledge itself is one of the hardest things you'll ever do. Me being 35, I'm still learning about who I am. Because everything I thought I knew and thought I was, that wasn't it. It's a process. It's a journey. Don't be too hard on yourself. I hate when I, when I hear people say, um, even when they make a mistake, oh man, I'm stupid. Words matter. Words matter. So you have to be mindful about what it is that you're saying to yourself. Because if you're saying, oh man, I'm stupid, I should And I know what you mean by it, but find something else to say. Because if you could call yourself stupid, I could call him stupid, I could call him stupid, and I could call him stupid, right? And that's because I don't feel that great about myself. I'm not being mindful about what I'm saying to myself, especially if we're talking about brotherhood. I have to be a brother to myself first. I have to love myself first. Listen, I'm not bad. Listen, I could be a kid for right? Maybe I should. I am preaching, I guess, a little bit. <laughs> but but I, I just want you to know, right, that I love you all, right? I, I need you to know that. Like, I love y'all. Everything that I do out here, as soon as it's past myself, because first and foremost, everything I do is about me, right? And I know it might sound crazy, but if I'm not happy, if I'm not healthy, then my daughter's not gonna be happy and healthy. The kids and, and young adults with whom I come in contact aren't gonna be happy and healthy. So first and foremost, what I do, I do for myself. And then I do it for my family. And then I come out here and do it for y'all, right? Because I know what it is. I know what it's like. Listen, I, was, I went back to my old alma mater in Bloomsburg. I know I said I was wrapping up, but I got another story. It just came to me, so we just gonna roll, right? We gonna roll, all right, cool. Uh, I went back to my old alma mater, Bloomsburg University. I hate that school, right? Like, why do you hate this school? But no, I, I actually like school. I'm not a, Lifelong student person. Plus, you ain't got to pay back your student loan while you're in school. Y'all might not know that. Right? Too soon, too soon. But I went back. To, I went back to Bloomsburg University to teach. First, a black man go back to that school to teach. Even if it was, it was a guest lecture for a couple days. So I'm in front of college students talking about my expertise, what I know, which is mental health. But I had such a love hate relationship with that place because I was arrested. I was kicked out of school. Right? I got 20 charges. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I said the same thing too, and they said you have 20 charges. Right? And so me being in a community full of where the average age was like 65, I took a plea deal. Alright? You're like, well, look, how you get in that situation? 
Because I didn't know how to cope. I didn't know how to deal. When I see, when I talk about knowledge itself, I'm telling you something that I know. Right? How I was coping. My thing was, I said I'd never been in a fight, but I could curse somebody out. And it all started with a cup of juice. I went and got the juice, I paid for the cup, and I was drinking it. I wanted to taste it to see if it was watered down. And the school police, she said, Phil, don't do that again. It's stealing. Me being from Philadelphia, me not being aware, me allowing my emotions to show without thinking first. Because if I would have thought through the situation, I wouldn't have to be up here telling you the story. Right? But I didn't cope in a healthy way. And so men, like many black men and boys, we express our anxiety and depression through anger and rage. And so when you say, no matter how much racism it was, if you say, Phil, don't do that again, I feel like I'm being wrong, instead of me saying, listen, the, the soda has the propensity to be watered down. I don't want to waste my money with you. I cursed her out. I yelled at her. I screamed at her. I threatened her. And that cost me because I didn't have knowledge itself. And so it cost me in a big way by me getting kicked out. But I needed that wake-up call. I need to look at myself. I need to look at my relationships, my friendships. And so I ended up making back to Bloomsburg, right? But I had to be mindful about who I was interacting with. I couldn't go out and party. I couldn't sit and play video games all day. I had to recognize that, you know what, in order for me to really be what I'm supposed to be, I have to have knowledge of self so I can have knowledge of my brothers, right? So when I sit here and say, I'm telling you this out of love, I don't want you to get arrested because of how you talk here, right? In a situation like that, no matter how righteous it is. I tell this story, this brother tell this story, so you don't have to do it. Y'all might not be Jay-Z fans, but Jay said, Hope did that, so hopefully you won't have to go through that, right? And we're still, what's gonna happen is some of y'all gotta go through it. Y'all gonna have to go through it. But you know what makes that time easier? When you got a brother. Somebody you can interact with. Talk about what you're feeling. What's going on. That's how you get through it. You should walk out of here at least know one person you ain't know before. Right? Just one person. Now, I got, I got this exercise before I wrap up. Um, listen, and I'm not going to, because I'm starting to have flashbacks of the classroom when I used to be in them. Um, and I know if I ask y'all to go find somebody you don't know, this might be the end of the session. Because they're they going to get lost. So what I want you to do, I want everybody to stand up. I want you to hold somebody's hand in a handshake motion. Alright? Just, just hold it. No, no, no. Just find somebody. Just find somebody and just hold it. Just hold it. Just hold it. Just hold the hand. Just hold the hand. Alright, now this is going to be the part. Now listen, I, now I know how this is going to go. I know. I want you to look them dead in the eye. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard right? And, it, and it, sh it shouldn't be that hard. You're supposed to be able to look your brother, your sister in their eye. Alright, so look, I, listen, I'm looking at the young boy, young boy. I'm waiting on you. You got some of my hand? Get some of my hand, young folk. Look him in his eye. Everybody look in the eye. That's what I you say. I want you to say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. You're going to make it. We're going to help each other make it. One more time. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. You're going to make it. We're going to help each other make it. Thank you. I appreciate you.